hey there remember every day is a fresh start so subscribe to isa kids and start a new and smart way of understanding your chapters better let's begin have you observed the type of bushes grasses trees and birds in the fields and parks in and around you are they similar or there are variations india being a vast country you can imagine the types of bioforms available throughout the country biodiversity is all the different kinds of life you'll find in one area the variety of animals plants fungi and even microorganisms like bacteria that make up our natural world india is one of the 12 mega biodiversity countries of the world whereas brazil is the earth's biodiversity champion with about 47000 plant species india occupies 10th place in the world and fourth in asia in plant diversity there are about 15000 flowering plants in india which account for 6% in the world's total number of flowering plants the country has many non flowering plants such as ferns algae and fungi india also has approximately 90000 species of animals as well as a rich variety of fish in its fresh and marine waters natural vegetation refers to a plant community which has grown naturally that is without human aid and has been left undisturbed by humans for a long time this is termed as virgin vegetation thus cultivated crops and fruits orchards form part of vegetation but not natural vegetation the virgin vegetation which are purely indian are known as endemic or indigenous species but those which have come from outside india are termed as exotic plants The term flora is used to denote plants of a particular region or period. Similarly, the type or the species of animals are referred to as fauna. This huge diversity in flora and fauna kingdom is due to the following factors. The first is relief, which includes land and soil of the area. Land affects the natural vegetation directly and indirectly. Do you expect the same type of vegetation in mountains, plateaus and plain areas or in dry and wet regions? The nature of land influences the type of vegetation. The fertile level is generally devoted to agriculture. The undulating and rough terrains are areas where grasslands and woodlands develop and give shelter to a wide variety of wildlife. Soil. The soils also varies over space. Different types of soils provide bases for different types of vegetation. The sandy soils of the desert support cactus and thorny bushes. While wet marshy deltaic soil support mangroves and deltaic vegetation the hill slopes with some depth of soil have conical trees next factor is climate it includes temperature photo period and precipitation The character and extent of vegetation are mainly determined by temperature along with humidity in the air precipitation and soil On the slopes of the Himalayas and 915 meters the fall in temperature affects the type of vegetation and its growth and changes it from tropical to subtropical temperate and alpine vegetation The variation in duration of sunlight at different places is due to differences in latitude, altitude, season and duration of the day. Due to longer duration of sunlight, 
trees grow faster in summers. Do you know why are the southern slopes in Himalayan region covered with thick vegetation cover as compared to northern slopes of the same hills? Well, this is because the southern slopes of the Himalaya receive more rain due to the southwest monsoon winds which travel west along the southern slopes. Whereas the northern slopes do not receive any such rainfall. In India, almost the entire rainfall is brought in by the advancing southwest monsoon and retreating northeast monsoons. Areas of heavy rainfall have more dense vegetation as compared to the areas of less rainfall. Why are the western slopes of the western Ghats covered with thick forests and not the eastern slopes? Any idea? Well, this is because the western slope gets much heavier rainfall than the eastern slopes. Moisture laden air moves eastwards across the western Ghats during the monsoon season. Have you ever wondered or thought as to why forests are important for human beings? Well, there are many reasons. Forests are renewable resources and play a major role in enhancing the quality of environment. They modify local climate, control soil erosion, they regulate stream flow, support a variety of industries, they provide livelihood for many communities and they offer a panoramic or scenic view for recreation. Not only this, they also control wind force and temperature and cause rains. They provide humus to the soil and shelter to the wildlife. India's natural vegetation has undergone many changes due to several factors such as the growing demand for cultivated land, development of industries and mining, urbanization, and overgrazing of pastures. The vegetation cover of India in large parts is no more natural in the real sense. Except in some inaccessible regions like the Himalayas, the hilly regions of central India and the Marusthali, the vegetation in most of the areas has been modified at some places or replaced or degraded by human occupancy. Let's see the temperature characteristics of the vegetation zones. Tropical vegetation is any vegetation in tropical latitudes, that is, in regions near the equator. Let's see the temperature characteristics of the tropical vegetation zone. The mean annual average temperature is above 24 degrees Celsius. Mean temperature in January is above 18 degrees Celsius and there is no frost. Subtropical vegetation zone is any vegetation in areas bordering on the tropics. The mean annual average temperature is between 17 degrees Celsius and 24 degrees Celsius. Mean temperature in January is between 10 degrees Celsius to 18 degrees Celsius and frost is rare. Temperate zone is the area or region between the Tropic of Cancer and the Arctic Circle or between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Antarctic Circle. The mean annual average temperature is between 7 degrees Celsius and 17 degrees Celsius. Mean temperature in January is between minus 1 degree Celsius and minus 10 degree Celsius. Frost along with some snow is common. Alpine plants are plants that grow in alpine climate, which occurs at high elevation and above the tree line. The mean annual average temperature is below 7 degrees Celsius. Mean temperature in January is below minus 1 degree Celsius. Snow is common. Let's take a short break where you can subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you are liking the video.
done let's move on name the state having maximum area under forest cover in india well let me give you a hint it is the second largest state in india you guessed it right it is madhya pradesh let's name the indian union territory having minimum area under forest cover lakshadweep is the union territory having minimum forest cover it consists only of coral islands and therefore has no proper soil for growing of forests except for coconut trees according to india state of forest report 2019 the forest cover in india is little above 21% The major types of vegetation in India are tropical evergreen forests, tropical deciduous forests, tropical thorn forests and scrubs, montane forests, mangrove forests. Tropical evergreen forests are restricted to heavy rainfall areas of the Western Ghats and the island groups of Lakshadweep, Andaman and Nicobar, upper parts of Assam. and tamil nadu coast they are at their best in areas having more than 200 cm of rainfall with a short dry season the trees reach great heights up to 60 meters or even above since the region is warm and wet throughout the year it has a luxuriant vegetation of all kinds trees shrubs and creepers giving it a multi-layered structure there is no definite time for trees to shed their leaves as such these forests appear green all year round you can see the stratification of a tropical forest there are tall emergent trees that are more than 40 meter tall then there is dense canopy above 30 meter short trees shrubs and herbs Some of the commercially important trees of this forest are ebony, mahogany, rosewood, rubber, and cinchona. The common animals found in these forests are elephant, monkey, lemur, and deer. One horned rhinoceros are also found in the jungles of Assam and West Bengal. Besides these animals, plenty of birds, bats, sloth, scorpions and snails are also found in these jungles. Tropical deciduous forests are the most widespread forests of India. They are also called the monsoon forests and are spread over the region receiving rainfall between 200 cm and 70 cm. Trees of this forest type shed their leaves for about 6 to 8 weeks in dry summer. On the basis of the availability of water, these forests are further divided into moist and dry deciduous. Moist deciduous is found in areas receiving rainfall between 200 cm and 100 cm. These forests exist therefore mostly in the eastern part of the country, northeastern states, along the foothills of the himalayas jharkhand west odisha and chatisgarh also on the eastern slopes of the western ghats teak is the most dominant species of this forest bamboos sal shisham sandalwood khair kusum Arjun and mulberry are other commercially important species. The dry deciduous forests are found in areas having rainfall between 100 cm and 70 cm. These forests are found in the rainier parts of the peninsular plateau and the plains of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. There are open stretches in which teak, sal, people and neem grow a large part of this region has been cleared for cultivation and some parts are used for grazing 
In these forests, the common animals found are lion, tiger, pig, deer, and elephant. A huge variety of birds, lizards, snakes, and tortoises are also found here. The thorn forests and scrubs. In regions with less than 70 cm of rainfall, the natural vegetation consists of thorny trees and bushes. This type of vegetation is found in the northwestern parts of the country, including semi-arid areas of Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh, and Haryana. Acacias, palms, euphorbias, and cacti are the main plant species. Trees are scattered and have long roots penetrating deep into the soil in order to get moisture. The stems are succulent to conserve water. Leaves are mostly thick and small to minimize evaporation. These forests give way to thorn forests and scrubs in arid areas. In these forests, the common animals are rats, mice, rabbits, fox, wolf, tiger, lion, wild ass, horses, and camels. Mountain forests. In mountainous areas, the decrease in temperature with increasing altitude leads to the corresponding change in natural vegetation. As such, there is a succession of natural vegetation belts in the same order as we see from the tropical to the tundra region. The wet temperate types of forests are found between a height of 1000 and 2000 meters. Evergreen broadleaf trees such as oaks and chestnuts predominate. Between 1500 and 3000 meters, temperate forests containing coniferous trees like pine, deodar, silver fir, spruce, and cedar are found. These forests cover mostly the southern slopes of the Himalayas, places having high altitude in southern and northeast India. At higher elevations, temperate grasslands are common. At high altitudes, generally more than 3,600 meters above the sea level, temperate forests and grasslands give way to the alpine vegetation. Silver fir, junipers, pines, and birches are the common trees of these forests. However, they get progressively stunted as they approach the snow line. Ultimately, through shrubs and scrubs, they merge into the alpine grasslands. These are used extensively for grazing by nomadic tribes like the Gujars and the Bakarwals. At higher altitudes, mosses and lichens form the part of tundra vegetation. The common animals found in these forests are Kashmir stag, Spotted deer, wild sheep, jackrabbit, Tibetan antelope, yak, snow leopard, squirrels, shaggy horn wild ibex, bear, and rare red panda, sheep, and goats with thick hair. Tundra vegetation at higher altitudes include mosses and lichens. Mangrove forests The mangrove tidal forests are found in the areas of coasts influenced by tides. Mud and silt get accumulated on such coasts. Dense mangroves are the common varieties with roots of the plants submerged underwater. The deltas of the Ganga, 
ਦੀ ਮਹਾਨਦੀ ਦ ਕ੍ਰਿਸ਼ਨਾ ਗੋਦਾਵਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਦੀ ਕਾਵੇਰੀ ਆ ਕਵਰਡ ਬਾਈ ਸਚ ਵੈਜੀਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਨ ਦੀ ਗੰਗਾ ਬ੍ਰਹਮਪੁਤਰਾ ਡੈਲਟਾ ਸੁੰਦਰੀ ਟ੍ਰੀਜ਼ ਆ ਫਾਉਂਡ ਵਿਚ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਾਈਡ ਡਿਊਰੇਬਲ ਹਾਰਡ ਟਿੰਬਰ ਪਾਮ ਕੋਕੋਨਟ ਪਿਓਰਾ ਅਗਰ etcetera also grow in some parts of the delta royal bengal tiger is the famous animal in these forests turtles crocodiles gharials and snakes are also found in these forests this is the map of the india showing the natural vegetation in different parts of the country let's discuss something What will happen if plants and animals disappear from the earth's surface? If the plants and animals disappear from the earth's surface then the ecological balance will be disturbed. Without plants there will be no oxygen available for breathing after some time and everybody will die. Next question is can human being survive under such a situation? Biodiversity means biological diversity that is there are many animal and plant species on our planet spread all over the world these animals and plant species including humans are all interdependent now why is biodiversity necessary and why should it be conserved each species has its own place and role to play in the environment and help in maintaining the ecological balance that's why it should be conserved medicinal plants india is known for its herbs and spices from ancient times some 2000 plants have been described in ayurveda and at least 500 are in regular use the world conservation union's red list has named 352 medicinal plants of which 52 are critically threatened and 49 endangered the commonly used plants in india are sarpagandha used to treat blood pressure it is found only in india jamun the juice from the ripe fruit is used to prepare vinegar which is carminative and diuretic and has digestive properties the powder of the seed is used for controlling diabetes arjun The fresh juice of leaves is a cure for ear ache. It also used to regulate blood pressure. Babool. Leaves are used as a cure for eye sores. Its gum is used as a tonic. Neem. It has high antibiotic and antibacterial properties. Tulsi is used to cure cold and cough. Kachnar. It is used to cure asthma and ulcers. The buds and roots are good for digestive problems. Bale. Extract of the leaves of this very familiar tree helps cure diarrhea, dysentery and constipation. Pudina helps in curing indigestion and healing bruises. Henna helps cure burns, while cinnamon helps cure pulmonary problems such as bronchitis asthma and even cardiac disorder and fever lavender eases pain and when applied to cuts and bruises it functions as an antiseptic marigold its extract is used for sunburns acne and blemishes this medicinal herb also soothes ulcer and helps cure digestive problems Like its flora India is also rich in its fauna. It has approximately 90,000 animal species. The country has about 2,000 species of birds. They constitute 13% of the world's total. There are 2,546 species of fish which account for nearly 12% of the world's stock. It also shares between 5 and 8% of the world's amphibians, reptiles and mammals. The elephants are the most majestic animals among the mammals. 
they are found in the hot wet forests of assam karnataka and kerala one horn rhinoceroses are other animals which live in swampy and marshy lands of assam and west bengal arid areas of the run of kutch is the habitat for wild ass and the thar desert is the habitat for camels indian bison nilgai or the blue blue bull chosinga or the four horn antelope gazelle and different species of deer are also some other animals found in india it also has several species of monkeys do you know that the wildlife protection act was implemented in 1972 in india india is the only country in the world that has both tigers and lions the natural habitat of the indian lion is the gir forest in gujarat did you know that the gir forest is the last remaining habitat of the asiatic lion tigers are found in the forests of madhya pradesh the sundarbans of the west bengal and the himalayan region leopards too are the members of the cat family they are important among animals of prey the himalayas harbor hardy range of animals which survive in extreme cold ladakh's freezing high altitudes are a home to yak the shaggy horned wild ox weighing around 1 ton the tibetan antelope the bharal or the blue sheep wild sheep and the kiang which is the tibetan wild ass furthermore the ibex bear snow leopard and rare red panda are found in certain pockets in the rivers lakes and coastal areas turtles crocodiles and gharials are found gharial is the only representative of a variety of crocodile found in the world today bird life in india is colorful peacocks pheasants ducks parakeets cranes and pigeons are some of the birds inhabiting the forests and the wetlands of the country some of the wetlands of india are popular with migratory birds during winter birds such as siberian crane come in large number one such place favorable with birds is the run of kutch at a place where the desert merges with the sea flamingo with their brilliant pink plumage come in thousands to build nest mounds from the salty mud and raise their young ones it is one among many extraordinary sights in the country is it not a rich cultural heritage of ours we have selected our crops from a biodiverse environment that is from the re- reserve of edible plants we also experimented and selected many medicinal plants the animals were selected from large stock provided by nature as milch animal they also provided us drought power transportation meat and eggs the fish provide nutritive food many insects help in pollination of crops and fruit trees exerting biological control on such insects is harmful every species has a role to play in the ecosystem hence conservation is essential however due to excessive exploitation of plant and animal resources by human beings the ecosystem has been disturbed about 1300 plant species are endangered and 20 species are extinct quite a few animal species are also endangered and have some become extinct the main causes for this major threat to nature are hunting by greedy hunters for commercial purposes pollution due to chemical and industrial waste acid deposits introduction of alien species and reckless cutting of the forest to bring 
land under cultivation and habitation are also responsible for the imbalance. To protect the flora and fauna of the country, the government has taken many steps. 18 biosphere reserves have been set up in the country to protect flora and fauna. 10 out of these have been included in the World Network of Biosphere Reserves. These include Nokrek Biosphere Reserve in Meghalaya, the Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve in Uttarakhand, Great Nicobar Biosphere in Nicobar Islands, Manas Biosphere in Assam, the Gulf of Mannar in Tamil Nadu, the Sundarbans Biosphere in West Bengal, Simlipal in Odisha, Pachmari and Achanakma Amarkantak have been included in the World Network of Biosphere Reserves along with the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve. Other biosphere reserves in India are the Hang Di Bang, the Bruce Aikova, Agastya Malai and Kancheng Zonga, Shesha Chalam, Panna and Cold Desert Biosphere Reserve which is also an important habitat of the rare snow leopard. Financial and technical assistance is provided to many botanical gardens by the government since 1992. Project Tiger, Project Rhino, Project Great Indian Bustard and many other eco-developmental projects have been introduced. More than 100 national parks, more than 500 wildlife sanctuaries and zoological gardens are set up to take care of natural heritage. All of us must realize the importance of the natural ecosystem for our own survival. It is possible if indiscriminate destruction of natural environment is put to an immediate end. Remember, we don't own the planet Earth. We belong to it and we must share it with our wildlife. Hope you have liked the video. In that case, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button, share it with your friends and family and let us know your feedback in the comment section below. We wait for your feedbacks, so please don't hesitate to write in the comment section. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.